Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Women's Health. I'm Stephanie Bader, and I'm glad you're joining us tonight. I invite you, we, both, we have both Zoom and Facebook Live going, so I invite you to join on whichever one you choose, and we'll get talking tonight about women's health issues. If you're on the Facebook Live, uh, feel free to check in and put the comments in the windows. For those of you who are on Zoom, Feel free to put in the chat, you know, chat as much as you want, and um, I'll try and answer your questions as we go along. And we'll try and cover everybody's questions as we can, because we're gonna talk a little bit about how to balance out women's health, um, how to balance out a woman's hormones, how to um, just achieve optimal health as a woman. Because I think every woman here, at least in the United States, we have really good hygiene. We aren't living in a country where you don't have clean water. You don't have means to um, care for yourself in sanitary ways. We're not at that level. We're at more of a level of what do we want to know? What, what do we really need to do to feel better? So that's what we're going to talk about because this statistic from, the two, from a 2015 report says that an estimated 77% of women don't know how to stay healthy. And when I thought about that, I, at first I thought, well, that sounds kind of crazy. But you know what? The more I think about it, the more I can see why. I mean, yesterday, I think it was, they announced coffee is really, really healthy for you and it's going to make you live longer. But what do you bet we hear in about three or four days now that coffee's gonna kill us? It's gonna be the death of us. Because they've said it with chocolate, they've said it with wine, they've said it with eggs. Everything we eat, one day it's perfect for you, the next day it's not. I mean, they've done it with kale, for the love of God. So we're gonna talk about just some str straight up basic principles tonight that absolutely go back to the basics to help you feel better, optimize your hormones, balance them out, and find better emotional health. Because if you, if you can do all of that, then you're gonna be in a much better spot when those news reports come on and sensationalize coffee or chocolate or eggs. And you can say, well, you know, I can see how my body's reacting right now and I'll make the changes as I want to. You know, if they, they keep giving you compelling evidence, then maybe you can change. But, you know, I'm going to keep drinking my coffee until I, my body changes and says, hey, it's not time to drink coffee anymore. But so let's dive into some ideas on um, what it takes to feel better. And, you know, I'm going to break it into some steps. Step one, you have to stay hydrated. And I know that's a huge bummer since I've been talking about coffee, but water is key to having your body thrive. So I've got some notes here from the H.H. Mitchell Journal of Biological Chemistry. 60% of an adult human body is made up of water, 60%. I've read some other stories where it's been up to about 75%. But then they break it down. The brain and the heart are composed of 73% water. And the lungs are 83% water. Your hormones need water to communicate with each other. They don't have that means of, they don't have that, um, that water to send their message through. It's like sending messages through mud. If you, and it's just not going to get to it. It needs the clear water and the ways to flow through your body. So you have to stay hydrated. Now, again, I was talking about coffee and I love my morning coffee. So don't take this as, well, she never drinks coffee because I have my two cups in the morning. But I'm gonna tell you, I also drink water all day long. And I want you to consider what you're drinking throughout the day because typical drinks that can be very dehydrating to the body, I mean, what you need to drink throughout the body, throughout the day for water, you can Google that. You can go online and you can say, for my body weight, how much water do I need? And you can easily get 
the cups of water you need. And it's easy to do. You carry a water bottle with you at all times. That's just the easiest way to do it. So for each cup of coffee or black tea that you drink in the day, that's a cup, not a mug, okay? An actual measured cup, you would need to drink an equivalent cup of, co a, a cup of water to counteract the effects, the dehydrating effects of that cup of coffee. So think about that. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. It's not that, you, hey, I drank a cup of coffee, now I have to drink a cup of water. You have to basically kind of drink two, you know, you have to drink a cup of water to just counteract that one coffee on top of all the water that you have to drink anyway through the day. So let's talk about soda, your Diet Cokes, your Mountain Dews, your Cokes, your, I'm not even gonna touch the energy drinks because when you hear just what a regular soda would do to you, you may change your thoughts on energy drinks because one 12 ounce soda will take 32 ounces of pure water to, it has the dehydrating effects of 32 ounces of water. So you drink one 12 ounce bottle of Coke, you're gonna need to replace it with 32 ounces of pure water. So if you needed to drink eight cups of water just to keep your body hydrated, and then you drink one Coke, you now have to add 32 more ounces of water to your daily regimen to balance that out. Does that make sense? If all this makes sense, um, even if it's decaf, it's not really necessarily the caffeine, it's a lot of the other chemical components in it, especially with soda. Now, let's talk about alcohol, because I'm gonna be perfectly transparent. I love a good glass of wine. Love it. But with each alcoholic drink you have, it can take up to five gallons of water to replace the dehydrating effects of, of one glass of alcohol. So if you're drinking a lot of alcohol and you go and you party it up and you wake up the next day and you feel terrible, let me tell you, the reason you feel terrible is because you are extremely dehydrated. And with that brain being 73% uh, water and you're five gallons low, that's why your head hurts. So stay hydrated. You want your hormones to feel better. You want to be more balanced and you want your body to work optimally. Get a water bottle. And if you're sitting there thinking as you're watching this, I absolutely hate water, put some fruit in it. Get those water bottles that have the fruit tubes that you just shove some fruit in there and make your own water infusion. Because I'm gonna tell you, you can make some really delicious things. Just Google some Pinterest things and put some fruit in it. You'll get the better effects of that fruit and the extra value of the fruit too. But I'm gonna talk about two oils that can help with the hormone aspect of it. The first one is grapefruit. So grapefruit oil helps support healthy progesterone levels in your body. Now you've got estrogen and progesterone and a whole host of other hormones that work in your body, but you know the two dominant ones as a woman are, are estrogen and progesterone. And um, progesterone is kind of your peacemaker. So as your month goes along for women who are still having their cycles, you know, your estrogen rises, your progesterone then comes in and kind of balances out your body to make peace with it. So you're feeling a little bit more peaceful, you know, a little more chill when the progesterone kicks in. If there aren't, they aren't high enough, you'll struggle to support pregnancy. You'll struggle to, um, you'll just struggle to feel really good without enough progesterone in your body. So grapefruit is a great one to add to your water rub on the insides of your ankles to help support your body in that ma manner. Other effects of grapefruit, you'll like yourself better. It's, that's the emotional aspect of, of grapefruit. It also is a natural detoxifier, so it helps you shed a little weight. 
It also helps great with cellulite, which is another female thing that there's men that get cellulite, but you know, we seem to love and own that, that thing. The other one I'm going to talk about is Slim and Sassy. Healthy blood sugar levels keep your hormones in check. And we actually have a term, a social cultural term for this now, and it's called hangry. And your blood sugar goes awry and you get angry. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because everything gets out of whack because your blood sugar's off, it triggers your hormones to act a certain way, it triggers your hunger, and you just get really cranky. Well, Slim and Sassy will help balance all that out Therefore, leaving your hormones in check, your blood sugar in check, reducing your cravings, and therefore you feel better overall. One of the side effects, you can lose a little weight if you're doing it in that manner. If you're not trying to lose weight with this, you know what? You, you won't. You don't have to. It's good for anybody. It can just be there to help you balance out hormones and blood sugar. It comes in a gum. I chew this all the time because for me, that's just an easier way to use it. But you can also put that in your water. You can rub it, you can, you can add it to a little fractionated coconut oil even and rub it on areas of your body that you're not really that big of a fan of. It helps, especially if you're rubbing it over your stomach area and your liver area. But stay hydrated if I haven't um, harped on that one enough. So, Nutritional balance. If I didn't talk about us eating a clean diet, I would not be doing my job. If your whole life comes out of a fast food line or a box, we need to talk. <clears throat> you need fresh vegetables. You need whole foods. And I don't mean like just an apple or an orange once in a while. You need to cook at home once in a while. And I know if you're looking at me going, oh, but I hate cooking. Well, there's ways to do that. There's ways to get around that and there's ways to make it more fun. It's for your health. And if you want to feel better, sometimes you're gonna to have to do some things that maybe are a little bit difficult. But even when you do all those things to make your body and eat right and do the right things, you know, even our food supply has been kind of depleted. I mean, yes, it's awesome to be able to get strawberries in January, but you know what? Those strawberries flew probably from a million miles around the planet to land where you are, and they were picked green, so they lost a lot of their nutritional deficiencies on the where they should have ripened on the vine and given us all the, the great nutrients of that strawberry, but they picked them too early so they wouldn't rot by the time they got to your grocery store and you could buy them all nice and perfectly red. So you need to supplement with something that's really good for your body and you need good supplements. So doTERRA has our top producing thing, our top producing product is our Lifelong Vitality. It's three bottles of supplements. Now for those of you who are saying, oh my gosh, that's a lot of pills. Well, good vitamins, made by, um, I, I heard a, a phrase from a pharmacist who was actually a, a compounding pharmacist. They said, good vitamins <clears throat> and good medicines are made separately so that they absolutely absorb in the body. Things that are compacted together are usually made with a ton of binders, and that tends to end up not absorbing in your body. So, again, it's another thing in your life that, yeah, it's, two pills a day from each bottle for a total of six in the morning at breakfast and possibly six at lunch or at lunch or dinner, however you want to do it. But you have your microplex, which is all of your, your vitamins that you need for the day. This is your standard whole foods vitamin. It's going to balance out and, and really fill up your nutritional pack in your body. You've got alpha CRS, cellular energy. If your cells don't know how to uh, develop and do what they need to do with uh, apoptosis, where they know that they, okay, it's time to live and it's time to die and it's time to get out of the body. If that cycle gets screwed up, it builds up in your body and then you don't feel well. 
Alpha CRS helps in that. It also helps boost your energy and it helps in your joint, your joints feeling better. And then Z Omega. This nourishes your cardiovascular system. It nourishes your um, brain health, your heart health, everything about that with good omega threes. And they're balanced out so that you have good bone nutrient. It feeds your bones, it feeds your nervous system, it feeds your energy. So you will have more energy and feel better on our vitamins. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee on them. So if you take all 30 days and you say to yourself, you know what, I don't feel any different and I don't really like these vitamins, send them back to doTERRA and they'll be happy to refund you. Now, what I will say, and the personal story we have on these vitamins in this house is that we took them for 30 days and we, because we eat pretty clean, we didn't have this big shift of, oh my gosh, we feel so much better and life is so awesome. But once we stopped taking them and that synergy between clean eating and really high quality supplements went away, our energy levels plummeted and we felt lousy, absolutely lousy. So we immediately got back on them and we've never stopped. So I invite you to give them a try. There's no risk. And um, I'd love to hear your feedback. Everybody that's tried them, that's stuck with it, has said that they have never felt so good in their life. Now, let's talk about our bones, because we all want beautiful bones, right? I mean, you can't see them, but if you don't have beautiful bones, you're gonna feel it later. And the sad part about this, I can say this now because I'm no longer in my 20s, is that you build the strong bones in your 20s when you really probably don't care about this. So if you're under 30 and you're listening to this, um, and you're trying to tune this part out because you're like, oh, no, 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 I just want to know about hormones. I just want to know how I can feel better and not this. This is one thing I want you to listen to right now because when you're 50 or 60, you're going to be wishing you had really beautiful bones. And the bone nutrient is going to be something that you may want in your life right now because it's going to balance out. It's got a good balance in here to build healthy bones because all of that peaks in your late 20s and then you're done. You just get to go with what you've got. And you know, all the, the sodas that you've been drinking, that depletes your bones. All the things that you don't do that are not super healthy, those kind of deplete your bones. When you have babies and that calcium, if you don't have enough calcium in your body, it takes it from your teeth and your bones to feed that baby. So, calcium, magnesium, zinc, all that is in here and helps build your bones so that you have stronger bones and you are going to help prevent those things that can happen later in life like osteoporosis and, you know, the, the joint problems that you could have later on. So, bone health, you want it. I'm telling you, you're going to want it. But now let's talk about hormones and emotional health because really and truthfully, nobody wants to feel like they are going from a super calm day to an emotional hurricane in 5.2 seconds. I mean, I don't know of anybody who really wants to feel like that. I haven't, I've met a lot of people who do do that, but I don't think they really want to do that. And sometimes it's associated with a monthly cycle. And sometimes it's just that their bodies are so out of whack that you just, you know, it's hard to ever get back into a rhythm of life where you feel good. So let's talk about it because like I said, I'm going to cover a little bit. If, if you didn't go through, you know, a big, you know, sex ed type class, or if you were like me and you were like, I don't want to hear about this or it just wasn't enough. You know, you go through your monthly cycle. The hormones produced in your body, you can be really upbeat and social when the estrogen's high. It's a great time to start a diet because estrogen 
helps set the tone for you being active, having a low appetite. You tend to eat healthier when estrogen's high, but estrogen is one of those hormones that gets real bossy to your body and can overtake things. And if it's not balanced out with a progesterone, like I said, the peacemaker, then you can send things into a awry. So if your cycle goes through this normal progression where the estrogen rises, then the progesterone comes to meet it, and then it all falls down, you start your cycle and life goes on, and then it rinse, rinse and repeat, shall we say. Um, even, even if it's all normal, it still can feel completely like a roller coaster. And, you know, I'm not going to say it's not fun, but, you know, it's not a joy ride. It's not like driving down the beach and, and enjoying everything. So a lot of people dread that time of the month. And, you know, I can understand it because it wasn't the most fun thing for anybody including me. <clears throat> so I was happy when I finally read into and learned about phytoestrogen. So this is good for, it, it reads for anybody who's premenopausal, post, pre or postmenopausal, which covers pretty much anybody who started a period to anybody who's died, okay? Because, you know, if you haven't ever started your period, then you're not, then you're something else. But if you're premenopausal until you go through menopause, and then you're postmenopausal once you've gone through menopause. Because I read a bunch of people were going, I'm not premenopausal. <laughs> and I was like, well, you haven't gone through menopause, so you are premenopausal. That's the definition. Get on phytoestrogens. Now, there's a couple different kinds of phy phyto means plants, by the way. There's a you know there's estrogen that your body naturally produces, which is a really good thing. And then there's estrogens that are produced naturally, which are phytoestrogens. They can come from things like clary sage. Um, there's products in here that help you and they can help balance out the hormones. And then there's things like xenoestrogens. They're the endocrine, they're the, the hormone disruptors that are often found in a lot of chemicals that are based in makeup, perfumes, a lot of skincare products have a lot of things that end up, if you Google what the, the chemical is, they are, they are labeled as a xenoestrogen. The difference making difference between the two of something like a, a phytoestrogen, like we have here, and a xenoestrogen is a phytoestrogen will kind of whisper to your body to go back into balance. It just kind of massages your shoulders, tells it how to go, and helps it get back to where it needs to be. A xenoestrogen walks in with a megaphone and jacks up everything like a drill sergeant. You don't want xenoestrogens in your life. You want phytoestrogens to help naturally support your body. So if you work in a situation where you're exposed to a lot of chemicals, you're exposed to a lot of different things like that, you know, take precautions and make sure that you're not getting exposed to a lot of xenoestrogens, especially if you're struggling to keep your hormones in balance, you're struggling with your fertility, you're struggling with anything like that because those are the things that can really impact you and you don't even realize it because it can get into your skin and it's into your body. So like I said, I love these. These help, these are plant-based estrogens that really help to balance out your hormones and, and just make you feel so much better. I will say, just like my doctor has told me anytime I've done anything with hormones, you have to try these for about three months, three to six months, to see how your body's going to react. If you are really, really, I'm gonna use my favorite term, jacked up, then you may need a full six months. If you're just kind of mediocre, you may only need three months to really evaluate yourself. 
But if you are in a really, if your body is really, really out of balance and out of whack, you may need six months of the phytoestrogens to truly see, okay, is this helping or not? So, and the phytoestrogen bone nutrient and one of the next oils that I'm going to talk about all come in this beautiful little women's kit that you can get when you're on LRP. And it is called Clary Calm. This is a beautiful little blend of oils. Let me see if I can read it here. It's got clary sage, obviously clary calm, lavender, bergamot, Roman chamomile, ylang ylang, cedarwood, geranium, fennel, carrot seed, palmarosa, and vitex. And um, all of these help to balance out hormones, especially, this is called the monthly blend for women. It's especially helpful to women during their cycles, during that time of the month. So if you know, if you're very, very um, regular and you know exactly when you're gonna start, three or four days beforehand, start rolling this over your stomach area where you might feel a little bit lousy. And it can really help with those symptoms. Now, I'm gonna tell you my little tip. I use this as my deodorant. I put it right here. You've got all kinds of lymph nodes that are attached into your, your breast area. And then those lymph nodes affect all kinds of, send out all kinds of hormone signals. And, you know, if I'm going to feed my body something, I'm going to feed it things that help balance out the hormones. So that's how I apply it. And I use a salt stone, which is um, more natural than, you know, your standard deodorants. And then I use this for the scent and for the hormone balancing. But again, this one works great for that. It's also very effective. Many people find this one effective for hot flashes. Another oil that um, is great for emotional balance is serenity. Serenity is great to diffuse. It's great to just take a drop, you know, put it in your hand and breathe it in because stress will trigger your hormones to go out of balance. And once they're out of balance, you've got to work to get them back into balance. So if you are getting yourself emotionally out of balance and you need to get back and centered and grounded, you can use serenity. It just, you can apply it over the heart and that helps to calm you and soothe you. That's another great way. And you can always, you know, when all else fails, you can go to the soles of the feet. But I love the smell of serenity that I think it would be one that you would want to actually be smelling on a regular basis so that you can um, get that aromatic benefit. Once you apply it topically, you're going to also get the benefits of that topical application. So... Other things that you can apply topically that help to cool, you've got clary sage, and I left that one sitting over in the box. But clary sage is another one that's great to help you uh, just calm down, balance out hormones, keep them in check, and just feel better. And um, my handy assistant is bringing it to me. Thank you. Cool. Clary sage just helps you, you know, it's with the base really big oil of this being clary sage clary sage just straight up is going to be a huge benefit to anybody who's having hormonal imbalance so if you are in the menopausal stage of life clary sage can be a big benefit to helping balance that out so you aren't getting the hot flashes now if you are getting hot flashes my other suggestion is peppermint Peppermint to cool you down, you put that back, and then it is, as Nora says, for your own personal summer. <laughs> and then again, Clary Calm can be very cooling for people who are struggling with hot flashes. And you can rub it any, you know, on your neck, around anywhere because of different oils in there. And, and one of the other cool tips in Clary, say, or Clary Calm, carrot seed oil is very highly protective like in sunscreen, so you are putting that on. Even though there's bergamot in there, um, the carrot seed 
helps it to not be so photosensitive. I wouldn't go out bathing in a tanning bed, but that's a whole other subject. But you're going to be a little bit protected with the carrot seed. Balance oil is my next one for emotional balance because balance will just help your mind, your heart, your body go into balance. It gets blood separating and flowing again through your body as long as you're hydrated. And it can ground you both mind, body, and spirit. So you have to maintain stress. You have to manage it. Stress is a part of life. It's not like you're going to just say, poof, I'm going to not be stressed out anymore. I mean, that's just like saying, hey, you know, I'm going to change the sky to purple today. And then it just does whatever you want it to do. It's not going to happen. Stress is not going to leave you. And in reality, a little bit of stress can actually be beneficial. So if you're out and you decide, hey, I'm going to go start exercising, that can be very stress relieving. And that is technically exercise is a positive stress unless you take it too far. And then you overwork your body and you make it a negative stress by exercise over exercising. But exercise can be an extremely good, you know, stress reliever. So just to compare the different types of stress. But balance is a great one to help you if you, you know, can't get up and go for a walk or you can't get out of your chair, you know, you can't get up and go do something physically to get the stress out. Or you put the balance on and you do go for a walk to help clear your mind and open up your thoughts. Because um, when stress is not managed, here's a few things that show up in your life. You may not realize that you're not managing your stress, but your body knows that you're not managing your stress. You have low energy. You have frequent headaches. You have an upset stomach, including diarrhea, constipation, and nausea. Aches, pains, and muscle tension. Insomnia. Frequent colds and infection. And a loss of libido. Those are all indicators that your stress level is too high and you need to start managing it. Or eventually your stress will manage you. And we don't want to ever get that far. So another great combo to do if you're really, really freaking out is to layer balance and serenity. And you can layer them either way. Balance then serenity, serenity then balance. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, it works both ways. But they both bring you back to a good state of mind. And one of the other oils that I truly love for hormone balance for everyone is Whisper. This one is like a perfume. And it smells very much like a perfume. And I will apply it back here behind my ears and maybe just a touch on my wrist. And it doesn't take very much. I mean, you can tip the bottle over and just swipe and really one drop will cover all of this. And maybe just a little bit around the tip that, you know, that the residual that lays there at the end of the diffuser. Um, and it will help your body naturally balance out the hormones. Now, if you smell the bottle, you may open it up and say, this is not for me. But I challenge you to put the bottle, the oil on because it reacts with everyone's chemistry very differently. So what it smells like on me will smell completely different on you. And so when I smell it, I smell very much baby powder. <laughs> It's really funny. Many of my friends, all they can smell is patchouli, and some others can only smell um, the jasmine in it. Some people can only smell the vanilla in it. So it's, it's, everybody's gonna be feeling a little bit different. But what I've noticed personally from using Whisper is that um, because I still have a cycle, I don't have the PMS that I once had. I don't, I mean, I just don't have the headaches. I don't have the cramping. I don't have the backache. I'm just not having those things. And it has made everything much better in my life. Whereas I just 
don't have to suffer. <laughs> and I'll take not suffering over, you know, miserable with cramps where, and then my head throbbing so bad that I want to throw up. I mean, I'll take that and use a little bit of an oil as a perfume. Personally, that's a win for me. So that's what I love about it. And I think that there's some people that say it's a very good libido booster. I don't know about that. I just feel better overall. So there you go. Now sleep. I talk about it all the time. Drink your water and sleep, don't I? You guys are probably sick and tired of hearing me talk about that. But it's so important. If you are not getting good sleep and you're not, you know, you're not going to rebuild your immune system. You have to recover. And the average person needs seven to nine hours of sleep. Now there's probably somebody out here that's watching this or watching the, that's gonna watch the replay and go, I only need four hours. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, there's some people that need 12. I might be one of those. So the average, okay? That's why I'm saying the average person needs seven to nine hours of sleep for their body to recover. Because sleep is not something you're doing because you're just lazy. You're just trying to waste time. There are tons of processes that are happening while you're sleeping. Your brain goes into a rest mode. Your body goes into a rest mode. Your digestion goes into a rest mode. That's why you really shouldn't go to bed on a full stomach because your body's trying to not digest a ton of stuff. It will, but then it jacks up other stuff. So you put your body into this rest mode and it kind of sends out all the signals to say, hey, what do I need to be rebuilding here? What do I need to be fixing? What is all good? And you kind of, your body does, does a self check to say, hey, where, where is it that we need to be working here? And what can I do? If you don't get enough sleep, it doesn't ever happen. Your brain doesn't get, you know, re, rebuilt. I know it doesn't rebuild, but you know what I'm talking about. You don't get rejuvenated in your brain. Your body doesn't get that, and your immune system will, will fail to work. And there's just numerous stories of people who skimped on their sleep, and they've, they've got stories to tell that ended up with chronic, chronic illnesses, some starting with the letter C, that they learned to sleep. So we're going to go back to serenity in your diffuser. Serenity only really, because, <clears throat> or serenity and vetiver, you can boost it up with some vetiver or some cedar wood or some lavender and cedar wood. Because by adding things, you know, like I'll give you an example. My kids put on cheer last night, which is very similar to on guard. None of them slept, none. Everybody was all jacked up because the oils that are in On Guard and Cheer are very uplifting, so they don't let the body go, come down and rest. And when you, even when you're trying to fight it with something like Serenity, you have this war going on in your body, and it's like some of the cells are trying to come up where some of the cells are trying to go down. So Serenity at night to help your body go into that rest cycle. But I'm not going to say not to ever use On Guard because On Guard is the whole reason I love oils. On Guard during the day, put it on your feet. Put it on your feet every morning and boost your immune system all day long. Put it, you know, you can drink this in your water if you like the taste. You can do an On Guard beadlet. You can diffuse On Guard. You can um, clean with On Guard. You can make tons of products with On Guard. But on guard can be very uplifting in the for nighttime. So unless people are really sick in our house, I don't really put that in their diffusers when, until I know that they're just going to go to sleep because they're just so tired. So we do very much calming. The Serenity also comes with. Um, there's also Serenity um, soft gels 
that have been tested just like your regular standard drugs. These are, even though they're a supplement, they've been tested just like the drugs that you take um, and are used to because they wanted to see the effectiveness of them and they proved to be at, in a very effective sleep aid for numerous people at doTERRA who were willing to give up their oils and not be on medicine and take these. So those are some tips to help you be healthier as a woman and take better care of yourself and find balance. I hope some of these have helped you and I hope that you find um, ways to implement them into your daily life so that you can, you know, just feel better as a woman. I know we as women want to feel better and I know the men in our lives would like us to feel better because I'm sure they don't want to suffer either. Um, so try them out. Let me know how they go. And if you have any questions, just put them in the comments or send me a message. I'm happy, happy to help. But that's all I've got for tonight. So thanks for joining me and I will chat with you soon.